Hi, and welcome back. Well, we're going to continue our discussion about operations on matrices. And we're going to look at, in this short little part of the video, three operations, the transpose, uh, sum and scalars, and multiplication of matrices. Now, transpose is probably the easiest of them. You simply take a matrix and you swap the rows and the columns of your matrix. So for example, let's say I have this two by three matrix and I want to form the transpose. And then the transpose is formed so that sub, uh, superscript T represents the transpose it is formed by taking the first row and making it the first column of your matrix, taking the second row of your matrix, and it becomes the second column of your matrix. So this is, some, this is the transpose of the matrix we started with. That's the first operation we're going to look at. And it's probably the easiest of the three to quickly understand. Sums and scalars are also pretty straightforward to define. In this situation, you have two matrices and it's, it's important that they have the same size in order to define addition. Now, you have your two matrices, A and B, and you want to add your two matrices together. And what you do, the sum of them, is just you add entries. Entries in the same spot get added together. So let me make this a little clear. What you're doing is you add the i j. That's a little messy. Let me rewrite that. It's clearer for your notes. Uh, add the i j entries, and we'll make this clearer in a second with an example. And we can also do scalar multiplication. So here I'm taking a matrix and I'm multiplying it by a scalar. So R is a real number. And what we're doing is we're multiply all entries by R. So as a simple example here, I have two matrices of the same size. They're both two by two matrices. They're in fact, they're, they're square matrices. So A plus B is formed by now looking at each spot and then I adding the entries together. So one plus minus one gives me zero. One plus zero gives me one. Two plus one gives me three. And two plus two gives me four. So there I have the sum of the two matrices. And let's say I want to multiply matrix A by three. So that just means that I'm scaling every entry in my matrix by three. So I get three, three, six, and six. Now these are obviously basic operations that you want to be able to form on your matrix. And Octave, of course, can do these things for you. So for the transpose, there's actually two different ways to get the transpose. You can have write out transpose A once your matrix is defined, or you can put A with a little dash there. Okay, so these are two ways to uh, find the transpose, and we'll we'll sh exhibit this in a second. And for addition, it's straightforward. You would just have A plus B. You just use the regular addition. And for multiplication, you should have R times A, where you have to put the uh, the uh, um, the asterisk there. And let's go over. Oh, it uh, and it, uh, expired. So let's see if we can wake it up. We'll go back. There's my matrix A. And I want to find the transpose of A. So there we go. And just so you can see, this is another way of capturing the transpose where we do A and then we put a little quote mark beside it. So there we have that. And let's just kind of repeat the two examples that we did on the slide. So here, it, or uh, uh, back in my notes there, my first matrix was this matrix with one, one in the first row, two, two in the second row. And my matrix B was minus one, zero, one, two. There we go. And then I just want to add the two matrices. There we go. It's the sum of the two matrices. I just wrote A plus B. And let's say I want to multiply every entry in my matrix, uh, in my matrix A by three. I just go three times A. And that's how I do my operations. So those are two of the three, whoops, you didn't want to see that. Uh, those are two of the three operations. Now the, the other operation we want to look at is multiplication. OK, 
Okay, so let's go over to the next page here where I've started writing out some of the details of multiplication. So how should you multiply two matrices together? Well, first of all, you need matrices of the right size. Okay, and the key thing is you have to have an A to be an M by N matrix. So N is the number of columns and B is an N by P matrix. Okay, and the same, the key point is that this has to be the same number. So the number of columns in the first matrix has to be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. And once we do that, once we have a matrix, two matrices that satisfy this relationship, we can define the product. We can take in the product, A times B is now going to be an M by P matrix. So these are this guy right here and this guy right here. That's where the M and P come from with the i j entry given by the following form. So AI1 BIJ plus AI2 times B2J all the way down to AIN up to B and J. Now this formula at first glance is a little hard to visualize and see what's going on. So I always find that the following picture helps. So I'm going to draw my matrix A. So here is my matrix A and we're just gonna kind of capture what's happening in row I. So in row I, we have AI1, AI2, up to AIN. So remember that this is an M by N matrix. So we have N columns. And we, then we have my matrix B beside it. This is the thing that we're gonna be multiplying. So this is my matrix B, and this is an N by P matrix. And what I'm going to be looking at is column J. And in column J, I'm going to have B1J, P2J, all the way down to B and J. So we, of course, the N should be here in the first index because that's how many rows that we have. Okay, so there we have what our matrix looks like. And what, what we're doing here is we're taking this row and we're taking this column and we're somehow combining those in order to get a new matrix in my product. So I'll go back to green. So we combine them and in row I of the new matrix, so this is my matrix A times B, and in column J, I'm gonna have a new value. So it's gonna be this guy right here, the square part, and what is that going to be? It's going to be equal to this formula right here. And the way to think about it is, you're taking row I in column J, because the number of columns is equal to the number of rows, there's the same number of elements, numbers in the, in the blue box. And what you're doing is you're pairing the first two and you're multiplying them together, right? AI1 times B, 1j, that's this term. Then you're pairing the term b12 up to b2j. So you're pairing those together and multiplying them. So you pair this one with this one, pair this one with this one, pair this one with the next one, all the way down to ba1n gets paired with bnj and you're multiplying. So you're multiplying each of the pairs together and then you're adding up the resulting sum. Okay, so somehow I like to visualize this by picking this column out of the, out of the uh, matrix and I'm rotating it and I'm pairing them up. And then I can multiply them together, pair, multiplying each pair together and then adding the sums of everything. Now, hopefully that explanation was good enough for you to kind of understand how multiplying matrices work. And we will do a full example, but I wanna give you a chance to kind of struggle with the definition for a second and see if you can compute the product of these two matrices. And we can compute the product of these two matrices because I have a two by three matrix over here and a three by three matrix over here. The number of columns is equal to the number of rows. So I can actually compute A times B. So after the break, we'll come back and I'll show you how to do this.